Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, May 17th, 2024. Thanks for joining us. Got a lot to cover, so we're going to dive right in. So uh, this past week's podcast, we had Ann Vandersteel, as you know, we had a very meaty discussion about all things geopolitical and financial and what some of her uh, thoughts were on those matters. We also had a special show that's coming up either today or tomorrow. Uh, we're editing it. We have a sp few special edits to do since it's a new experimental show for us on the health side. This will be exclusive to the Club Patriot side where you can find all the links in there. This has to do with new holistic healing solutions, uh, photo therapy, light and frequency therapy, things that have uh, been tried and true for a lot of people uh, over time. And now uh, these folks are coming uh, out more and more with the information, the broadcast, so that you can take advantage of them prior to the new cures and technologies we're all waiting uh, in this new season. So that should be up in the next day or two. So just be, please wait patiently. That's Gus Moyer and Suzanne Holt, who joined me here in South Florida, took some time out of their schedule to do that. I appreciate them both for doing that. And I pray that that blesses you both as well. Let's see, we have uh, this week's podcast coming up. We have the one and only Lynette Zhang. Very excited about that. Uh, followed her for quite some time, and we're going to be getting into some real deep dives about gold and silver and how it relates to the currencies, bonds, and cryptos that we're all holding. Uh, the Mr. QC, the Boeing whistleblower, is making a return engagement with some updates on what his findings are within his own company. And then we are going to have uh, Denise Boland. Always a pleasure to have her on our podcast and, and spend time with her. Then, of course, the venerable David Mahoney, Nick Van Amman, and Rod Steele to round out the end of the month. Okay, so let's jump into the headlines now. Uh, Putin and Xi to meet in China, deepening ties in project stability in order to remove the U.S. dollar hegemony. No surprise to all of you. China dumps the largest amount of U.S. Treasury's agency debt in history at a negative $60 billion loss. And by the way, 90% of Russia and China trades are now done in the rubles and yuan highly significant for what we're anticipating. And we're seeing the BRICS continue to amalgamate. Speaking of BRICS, they continue their growth towards de-dollarization with a 43 plus country initiative of countries applying to get on board with more countries set to join in 2024 and beyond. Melinda Gates to step down as co-chairman of the Gates Foundation. Her official step down date is June 7th. Robert Kiyosaki warns US dollar to crash as soon as BRICS gold crypto emerges out of the shadows. Now you'll note that I've talked now to Greg Manorino, Andy Sheckman, Jim Willie, and soon Lynette. As all financial subject matter stalwart experts, they're all acknowledging the importance of precious metals as it pertains to bonds, cryptocurrencies, and now foreign currencies. You've heard Andy talk about the dinar. Uh, you're going to start to see some of these folks really begin to acknowledge it more and more. On our show last week with Greg, the uh, last question we discussed was the currencies, and he's acknowledged that as being, quote, no secret. So... It's interesting to see these folks who have been diehard uh, metals experts and aficionados now starting to realize how the pieces all combine uh, with respect to all these other different mechanisms. Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico, was publicly shot basically for publicly rejecting the WHO Global Pandemic Accord. Japan follows suit as well in a public protest against the, Ho the WHO's agencies as well. Zimbabwe continues to make major headway towards joining BRICS Bank ahead of the August country elections with the support of Brazil, South Africa, and Russia. Iraq continues to advance, their ball, advance the ball with their efforts to return to the international stage by appointing a permanent non-corrupt non-proxy speaker this Saturday and finalizing the amended budget in parliament. And Israel, of course, continues to play their role by attacking deep state factions in Rafah, Hezbollah, and Lebanon have all been confirmed. That means that Iraq is next by removing the deep state Iranian proxies within Iraq's parliament. We've discussed that many times before. Also of note today, Iraq pays off all outstanding loans to the IMF. So that's another step closer to them getting serious about returning internationally. Now let's talk a little bit about corporate layoffs in the overall job market. Walmart to reportedly lay off hundreds of corporate staff and relocate other workers. Amazon axed more than 100 customer service uh, employees this month. Disney CEO Bob Iger announces cutbacks this year to up to $4 billion. That's twice the amount we discussed last time. Under Armour to lay off hundreds of employees as profit plunged 10% and look to do even worse going forward. 
This one's really key for our Australian followers. Major Australian bank Macquarie Bank reports as of this Monday, May 20th, they are doing away with cash altogether. From November 1st, customers will not be able to write or deposit personal checks, deposit or request bank checks, deposit cash or checks over the counter at NEB branches or make super contributions or payments via check. So to all of our Australia followers, followers, those who are standing up and fighting against the tyranny like we've seen in Brisbane, please keep doing so. But those who are not, get in the fight. Because you folks don't have the Constitution, the Bill of Rights and guns the way we do in the U.S. They know that we're not going to stand for it. But you folks need to continue to take your stand as well. It's very, very important. Um, Spirit Aerosystems plans to lay off as many as 450 Wichita, Kansas employees. Grupo Bimbo Bakeries to close all U.S. locations. Honda to slash 1,400 employees or roughly 14% of the joint total venture workforce. Amazon lays off 100 customer service jobs, uh, which we mentioned, which equates to 1% of the total workforce, but promises more cuts are coming in the near future. And yesterday, the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Industrial Average topped 40,000 for the first time. Speaking of milestones, now silver is officially over the $30 mark today at 30.56. Brent crude oil as of this broadcast is $83.54 and silver at 24036, $2,403.56. So we've hit some pretty big milestones this week. Now, as we've touched on before, as silver is now over the $30 plateau, the next stop, according to the subject matter experts, is $50. And then it will continue to move there as XRP wins their case, as the dinar happens, as the China-Taiwan happens, as Israel does their part, we're going to see silver continue to skyrocket, particularly as the 10-year Treasury bond yield we've touched on continues to plummet below a certain mark. They'll have no choice but to let those precious metals go, and that effectuates, obviously, everything else. Gold Telegraph reported Robert Friedland was the source that... Um, we need to mine as much copper in the next 20 to 25 years as we have done in the last 10,000 years. So that continues to substantiate what we've talked about here and on Denise's show, that as silver becomes the backbone for manufacturing AI and robotics, they're going to need to turn to another metal. Copper will be the perfect backstop. So I wanted to just uh, cover that thoroughly. Now to the commentary, commentary section, I want to clean up a mistake that I made. On Ann Vandersteel's show, I mentioned um, Mike Lindell, whether he was on the good side of the equation or not. That was a misspeak on my part. I apologize. It happens. We're human. Um, I was referring to General Flynn because many of you continue to ask, is he friend or foe? And I was trying to get you the best information and answers possible from our subject matter experts like Ann, Derek Johnson, and others to try to get down to the nut of the, of the concern. So I misspoke. I was asking her about General Flynn, not Mike Lindell. I know he's on the good side. Um, we talked offline about it, and for whatever it's worth, she maintains he is definitely on the right side of history, but felt that he was motivated to run for president in 2028. So do with that what you will. Some of you believe he's good. Some of you believe he's not. That's for you to decide. We're just trying to get the truth to you as best we can. And on that note, um, folks, let's continue to build each other up and not put each other down the comments. The point has and never has been who is right, because nobody's right or wrong 100% of the time. None of us are God. We're all human. And I'm going to say this again for the people in the chief seats, because I still see it in the comments, this right fighting and stuff. We're not going to do that here. You can do that somewhere else. We're not here for that. The point of this channel is to get you the information for God's giving people and to cross the finish line together and win as a team. That's all that we care about, right? So it's not about right or wrong. It's about winning and helping and servitude. That's all it's ever been. You know, my mom used to say it best. Many of your moms did. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. You're not required to comment. And if you don't have a good comment, just leave it, okay? You're not always going to agree, not always going to disagree. And uh, to quote my sister, Judy, who had a great adage here I want to share with you, um, if you have to choose between being right and being kind, be kind, and you'll always be right. That's a good way to end the show for today. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We appreciate it. As always, if anything urgent or major breaks out, we'll do a breaking news story. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend, and we will see you next week for the wrap-up and the shows, respectively. Thanks a lot. And God bless.